I see a window behind you and it's a sliding one. So sliding windows, as long as they don't go down, are always openable from the outside. Oh, hey, that's a fun yeah. thing to know. Thank you for that. That's a really cool thing to know in my new house, in this new neighborhood, uh, that there is a point of entry for people if they just want to come inside. You should be very worried. Cells proliferate and then it creates disease. Wait, are you doing a bit? Is that real? Is it real that you can no. slide? Oh, you fucker. You fucker. No, 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 no. You, you're, you're fine. You're safe. Okay. Is this the new house? Yeah. Because on the show, you had made the entire studio audience on Conan yell, um, buy me a house. I don't think there's anything people like more than someone asking someone who's very wealthy to buy them something very expensive. And I think the way the entire audience just turned on Conan and then just started <laughs> chanting with me, it's one of the most thrilling moments of my life. I think when you're on TV, people have this idea that you have millions of dollars. If you've ever appeared on, on television before, you are a billionaire and could just afford a house. Because people were like, well, you could pay for that. And I'm like, I made $47. <laughs> <laughs> the inflated sense that we have that anyone on TV is cash rich. Though it's fair that Conan could afford to buy you a house in deep Glendale. Uh, well, first of all, it's Altadena. And I think you saw Glendale because I'm Armenian. Yes, which congratulations on the... It's not what you say when you raise awareness. What? Uh, the... Is that what that is? Because I, 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 I will be fine to admit that, that I was ignorant to it. I thought it was like a reminder of like, hey, this terrible genocide happened, but there's a new issue. There's an area in, uh, there's an area near Azerbaijan and Armenia called Artsakh, and then the Soviet Union gave it to Azerbaijan, but it's like 95% Armenian and they govern it and they run it. And then Azerbaijan just suddenly brought Turkey in and was like, hey, Turkey, come and let's, let's invade this area. And Armenians are like, what the fuck? And so, yeah, that's what's happening right now. It's awful. I mean, it could become an all-out war. And, you know, Armenians in L.A. were very vocal. Very vocal. Shut down the 101. Yeah. So you've probably seen a lot of Armenian flags on a lot of cars. There's a bunch of, a bunch of cars on, on the 101, and it's all the, the orange and blue flag everywhere. Mm -hmm. Unless I just, the past two weeks, I've been... Really getting it out there, but I've just been not paying attention to the message. But now we know. Now you know. You've been doing a Team Kogo show, Sonomo Sassian Fixes Your Life, where you've talked about hey, how you could scam the uh, pet support system as my pet animal. How do I convince my husband, then our landlord, we need a pet. You need a pet. Look up all the reasons people have service dogs, whether it's like social anxiety, then it becomes like a medical issue. You've also talked about uh, something called juice juice. It says, how do you manage a stressful day at work? Something called juice juice time. Travel at work, you're stressed, um, drink on the job. That's juice juice time. You know, am I qualified? Some would say maybe I'm not, but I think that I am because I've lived. And so when these people ask me these questions that are very serious, I like to ref like take from my experiences and say, when I'm stressed at work, I do things like I have juice juice time, which is you take a normal looking beverage, whatever it is, orange juice, and you put a little bit of vodka in there or any other type of alcohol that's easily accessible. And you put it on your desk in a, uh, in a like water bottle or some sort of hidden vessel. Yes. A cocktail. Yes. You mix alcohol with, you're saying, a non-alcoholic beverage. Right, 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 right. You take something, I don't know, we'll call it, like, you mix it, so let's call it a mixer. Let's call it a mixer. <laughs> you take some alcohol, and you put it in this mixer, and then, yeah, uh, <clears throat> you know, that way you can have a nice buzz, but you're not getting, like, you know, Hollywood Boulevard you wasted at work. Okay, so it's, it flies under the radar. I'm always nervous about that, even for like doing stand up on live, like that people would know I'm drunk for some reason. Has anyone caught on to you in the office? Bend to your desk. It's fluorescent lights. There's always episodes of, of Friends playing. Mm -hmm. There's a bunch of junk on there. Has anyone been like, hey, you seem happy? What's wrong? Yeah, uh, it's happened. I don't, first of all, I should say I don't do juice juice time all the time. I think that's like 
that's a problem. Yeah. But I, no, did, this is the uh, but when I do do it, my eyes do kind of glaze over and uh, my reaction time slows down. And so I think people are like, do you have a, do you have a fun lunch? That's code for that. <laughs> I don't know. But it sounds yeah. different about you. Like, I got highlights and they're like, what? Yeah. And then they're on to the next thing. Yeah. Sona fixes your life. I think that I've fixed a lot of lives. It's amazing what you can do by just answering a single question that people have. Could you fix my life right now? I'm supposed to go back out on the road because um, I'm supposed to shoot this special. And some comedy clubs are open. I know. HBO Max special. Hey. Some comedy clubs are open and I'm a little worried right now. I think if I fix my life that maybe the clubs aren't the most sanitary environments that maybe they're not taking as seriously as like a big brand like Target because it's just like a comedy club employee. It's like, yeah, I want that down. No, comedy clubs are have always been disgusting. Yeah. I'm going to digress for a second. So uh, I feel like I've never seen like an updated comedy club. And so you have no, like, okay. So once I went, this is really random. I went to the Playboy Mansion once. Yeah. And I went there not for a party. I went there for a nice lunch with two other people. And we just sat and we had lunch. There was no like naked girls running around or anything. But then I got a tour of the Playboy Mansion after and they took us to this one room, opened this door and the floor is like a soft, cushy bed. And it's clear that there were just like orgies on orgies on orgies in here. And I don't think that they changed that flooring since like 1976. Right, because so, there's no fitted sheet for a floor. Well, it's like it's like the carpet. It's just it's weird. It was like a very soft flooring. My point is, I look at comedy clubs that same way as I do as that room that was in the Playboy Mansion. Yeah, and like back in the day, people were like doing it, and they were like doing coke and whatever. So there's like the entire club is just full of jizz and coke remnants and like drink yeah. that people spilled and people laughing and they're spit all over the place. And the jizz, if you're a good comedian, the, the whole audience is jizzing. So much jizz. Everything is, <laughs> <laughs> the comics jizzing. Yeah, you are right that they're not updated at all in the fact that there'll still be like photos up of, of canceled comedians that were canceled a long time ago. Like that guy was canceled for doing jokes about the challenger <laughs> and that's still up. But I think you'll be fine. Okay. Here's the thing. So your advice for me is I think you'll be fine I think and watch out for jizz puddles. Yeah. Like you've been to protests. I've been to protests. Yeah. That like, I thought that they were going to be really scary. If you have a mask and you stay away from people and you don't touch any of anything in the comedy club, then I think you're going to be fine. Okay. Yeah. If you're going to catch anything, it's going to be like syphilis, not COVID. Right. It's going to be a hepatitis. Yeah. It's going to be, yeah, one of the strains, which we have vaccines for. It's fine. Please. I always say don't let hepatitis dominate your life. Yeah. Give me hepatitis. No, don't. That was terrible. No, don't. <laughs> no, I was trying uh, to say like, oh, I, I'd rather have something that's treatable than what you were just included in the in the diy conan where they reanimated fans of the show reanimated your interview when you're on the show after kumal canceled yeah so there's animators submitting there's people playing you how how did you feel about the portrayal i loved it for the most part for the most part it was all very flattering and sweet there was one that someone drew where i look like 400 pounds. Is this the one that you had superpowers? Like you come out and you I completely evaporate, Andy. That's not it, but now you're making me think that there's an, oh, maybe that is. It was a, it was a hand-drawn animation where I'm like. Your signature face, your headshot, yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Like, this person has like, no neck. You, you know when they put a pin mark like right here and then it's just like. Yeah, the space, oof. Oh, is that how people see me? But I, you know, it's fine. But 
everything else it was really sweet i i i, I mean you know i can't see it the drawings are tough and i think what happens when people draw you is they accentuate the one feature about your face that you maybe don't like it's the most extreme in an effort to capture you yeah and it's flattery but it is the meanest roast of your life you're like oh well now i'm worried about that part what's the feature let's talk about it the photo of me looked like it looked like uh, if Dobby from Harry Potter was allowed to become a real boy. <laughs> it is very troubling. <laughs> it's just like, oh, we gave him somewhat man features. <laughs> like every time they do those things of like, like Homer Simpson, what if he looked like, what would he look like as a real human? He looked like that, but with Dobby. Oh, but Moses, I think that just means that you're very like, delicate, you're delicate. But not, I die on a beach. Yeah. Yeah. Like not, I'm not trying to be mean, but you are, you look like a, a prince from another era that like no one was allowed to touch. A delicate prince. <laughs> yes. That, that is what I go. What's my brand? A delicate prince. And don't touch me, sir. <laughs> this, that's somehow worse than the animation. That's worse than the drawing. Oh, come on. <laughs> it's not. It's, you know what's good about it is if somebody comes up to you and is like trying to underestimate you, like, I mean, can I'm a delicate prince. You're not allowed to touch me. I'm a prince, not even a king. A prince means I didn't even earn it. I was born into the status. <laughs> Don't touch my crimson milk skin. Have you ever been in a in a fight? I feel like you're just like a, a lover, not a fighter. Yeah, I was in a fight. Uh, maybe I was like 19. Have you been in a fight? Never. I've been in a lot of verbal fights, but never a physical one. It is insane when you zoom out of a, because like my girlfriend and I are very close and we're also very loud together. It started like we were making fun of couples that had like weird names, which are like sugar kicky. And we're like, what's the worst nickname? But now we've completely abandoned that bit. So we're actually calling each other like, you're garbage, you're pee. <laughs> and there was just a woman like watering her plants that had never heard us before. So terrified. Oh my God. I love your girlfriend. Can you tell Con yeah, I said great. hello? She loves you. She's always mad in the corner over there. <laughs> you just keep her in the corner while you do this? Just tell her like, don't move from that spot? Not the I keep her there. She takes up residence in the corner. We'll mark her territory with some pee. And then, <laughs> and then <laughs> she's always ready to attack. She so for the viewers the at home, purple. just know that my girlfriend's ready to attack. Oh, and she's I up on the ceiling, like the movie Hereditary, where she's up, like, ready to pounce. <laughs> she wants me to stop doing this show. She's She creates all these burner accounts, so all the YouTube comments, like, this show sucks, where's Conan? It's all her. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's the twinkle of fear is in my eyes. So how do I fix that? Fix my life. Um, I think you just give her whatever she wants. So thank you so much for, for joining us. That was fun. I love talking to you, Moses. Right? Let's do this when it's not recorded. I'm down. Where are you? Where are you living? Okay. Are you in... Uh, let me give you my exact address on the air. Yeah. Okay. The, the, the street is on. Yes. Call it's really just... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but we're the only people still here in, in LA. Yeah. Everyone has fled. Yeah, well, world's ending. Thank you so much for joining us. Sonoma Masassi Fixes Your Life is a show. Go to the Team Coco Instagram. You can see it all. Bye. Bye, Sona. Say hi to, say hi to Kantu for me. Kantu. She won't come off the ceiling. Okay, classic. All right, bye.